Hey, welcome. We're in the book of Exodus today, chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. We've done the Ten Commandments recently here, but now we're back to a causistic law. These are kind of if-then cases. These are particular applications. And of course, you'll remember that the fifth of the Ten Commandments was, you know, to honor your mother and your father. And uh, now this, we're going to look at verses 15 to 17. I'll read it. Uh, but this is applying some of that to uh, actual cases. So here we have the, the thing here. He who strikes his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him or he is found in his possession, shall surely be put to death. He who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. So there you have it again, another, another set of three, like we had yesterday morning, three laws. And the, the outcome here is death, death, or death. Uh, let's look at the verse 15. He who strikes his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. So when it says father and mother here, I don't think that we're, we're not really talking about absolutely, literally, specifically only father and mother. This is any person who is in that place, a grandparent, a great-grandparent, uh, an adoptive father or mother, anybody who, the family is a very key unit in civilization. And so this is this is really a central piece. So this is absolutely verboten. Now, another thing here, we're not talking, I don't think, about like something like a, a kid slaps his parent. Obviously, you should never do that. But this is talking about like the, the child assaults the parent, the child takes and, w w you know, attempting to kill the parent, basically, or do, do such harm that they could have died. That's what we're talking about here. This isn't just talking about a uh, momentary lapse that is insignificant. But here we have a very strong line here. Yeah, no, this is not allowed whatsoever. I have a comment here from uh, Sarna's commentary. I just want to read a line or two here from Sarna. The extreme severity with which both offenses are treated clearly indicates the importance that biblical religion attached to the integrity of the family as the indispensable prerequisite for a wholesome society. There is also... Here, the unassailable conviction that the dissolution of the family unit must inevitably rent to shreds the entire social fabric. That's page 122 of Sarna's commentary on Exodus, the JPS commentary. Uh, yeah, so this is talking about the two that particularly have to do with family, and then there's the one in the middle here. But yeah, this is strong, strong. This seems weird to us in an, in an age when, what's our age? Well, what are we seeing is, uh, we're seeing parents, we're seeing teachers in the state say, well, it's really up to the teachers. Uh, the, it's not, the kids aren't the teacher's responsibility. They're really the responsibility of the teachers or the effectively that's the state. So we have this, this great uh, tragic uh, movement away from the family unit, uh, dissolving, destroying the family unit uh, and moving toward the state. The state is mommy, the state is daddy. And so that's what we have in our day is you read this and it sounds like, well, that's that's really weird. Isn't that extreme? A kid attacks his parent and they would be uh, taken and killed. That just seems uh, completely uh, disproportionate. But it, the problem isn't with God. The problem is with our culture today. The problem is that our culture doesn't understand the, the grave significance of the family unit for civilizational, you know, civilizational anything. So God is putting the strongest safeguards he can here around the family unit. And so do some of the other commandments. You know, you should not commit adultery, right? So we have this. You might have heard of the Code of Hammurabi. That's a, another ancient Near Eastern culture. They've got a law there, Hammurabi's law. And in that law, if you, if you slapped your parent, the male child, his penalty was to have his hand cut off. So uh, this isn't just Israeli. This is very severe. Uh, that way. But it, this is more severe because it's death. You know, you're not losing a hand, you're losing your life. I can't bypass verse 16 today uh, because, you know, there's some question about slaves and uh, that we've been having here. Uh, we just had a couple of presentations about slavery here just before this. Do you notice that in verse 16 that if you kidnap somebody, basically if you're a slaver, if you're involved in any way, shape, or form in, in uh, slaving, uh, the death penalty. Isn't that interesting? The death penalty. 
God is not uh, favoring slavery. Now, God's slavery is more like an indentured servant thing or, you know, because you get six years and then you're out for most of the cases. There's just a few exceptions. Uh, or it's more like uh, you're learning an apprenticeship. Um, one of our brothers here mentioned good man, and that's true. Uh, what we have here is, yeah, if you were involved with slaving, transporting slaves, uh, grabbing slaves, selling slaves, any kind of slaving, verse 16 says death penalty for you. God is quite uh, quite uh, obstinately opposed to that kind of slavery, He's just viciously opposed to it, and, and rightfully so, you know, good for him, good for us. So any kind of participation in, in that kind of thing, like the Hebrews came out of Egypt, that's all death penalty stuff. <laughs> So the Ten Commandments, the, the Ten Plagues, the Ten Plagues don't seem quite as severe when we recognize here that uh, this is all death penalty stuff. You're dealing with slave stuff. Well, that's forced labor. That's, that's, you're done. In God's eyes, you're done. That's not allowed. So interesting business here as we're looking uh, at some of these particular applications here as we go. Let's see what happens as we carry on tomorrow morning with some more. Bye-bye.